casting all your anxieties on him for he cares for you. First Peter 5, 7. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Abba, that you do love us. That you sent Jesus for us. And Jesus, I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit for us. And I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Place the tent of peace and life over us. And I'd ask, Lord God, that we would begin to cast, that we would begin to see the need to cast all those things upon you that we hold on to so dearly, even the things we actually love. <laughs> and uh, I just thank you for this word this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to the Lord. Hmm. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning I was on the trail. And uh, I was praising the Lord. I, I just got so many different things going on around me right now. That uh, sometimes it's easy to get swallowed up in everything that goes on. But I try to keep the Lord my focus. Because that's where my strength is. And this morning i come off the trail and i'm going across the field and i'm walking and all of a sudden i start feeling anxious i start feeling this less than feeling <laughs> this feeling of, of i i can't really describe it it's just like a jumbled ball of mass something or another that, you know it's like if you eat something that's not very good it kind of sits and weighs heavy on your uh, stomach like some greasy taco or something. And uh, I know a lot of people like greasy tacos, but me, I eat a greasy taco. It's hard on my stomach. And uh, so at any rate, as I was walking, I realized that I don't own those debts. I don't own that those negative emotions. Those don't belong to me. Jesus owns them. He bought and paid for him with the price of his life. <laughs> for all my sins, not that that's sin, but that's a struggle. And, and the word of God says to cast all those things on him. And, and so uh, I realized that I don't own these things. Heck, I don't even own myself. <laughs> I belong to the Lord. I'm a son of the Most High God. That's where I need to see my identity. And and so, at any rate, I realized that even my external debts are owned by the Lord. Everything I have is owned by the Lord. And we need to begin to see that. When we begin to walk in that mindset, it, it, it puts us in a position to, to trust in the Lord. To realize that He's our source. He's our supply. He's our happiness. <laughs> and we can be happy in times of stress. We can be happy in times of sorrow. We can be at peace. When everything else around us is going to H-E double toothpicks. We belong to the Lord. And uh, the Lord owns our debt. Who owns our debt? The Lord owns it. It isn't the people in a bank. They just think they do. They got something written on a piece of paper. But we've got sureness. We've got sureness. We stand on the rock of our salvation. Jesus the Christ who died for us. More importantly, who rose again. Glory. And uh, this morning the definition is of own. And who owns it? Jesus owns. He bought and paid for it with his life, for everything. Okay. Used with possessive to emphasize that someone or something belongs or relates to the person mentioned. As far as my case, Don, he owns everything. Does that mean that uh, I'm not going to pay my bills and stuff? No. He's going to he's going to give me the resources to do that always. Does that mean that I, that I should worry about those things? No, I shouldn't worry about those things. I should be trusting that the Lord's going to supply every need according to His riches and glory. And I'm a worry wart. 
I worry about my bills and stuff. Not that I don't have the money to pay them, because I do. But I still worry about them. So, in realizing who owns the debt, who owns anything negative in my life, or positive for that matter, I got to look at Jesus in this. That in Him, I'm going to find the strength to overcome those things. Glory. And, and we need to see that. We need to we need to realize that. We need to give that to the Lord. Glory to God. Praise your name, Lord God. Woo! Praise the Lord. I feel the Lord just breathing on this, breathing life into this. In 1 Corinthians 10, 26, it says, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I just spilled a little bit of my tea, so I'm trying to clean the mess up so it doesn't get too sticky because I use honey and it's very sticky. <laughs> yes, you will get fully cleaned up later, but I don't want my mouse to get on it. Glory. You read that again. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What does that mean? Everything. The fullness thereof, everything. Not just some things. Not just the things we deem that we should give to Him. Our good times, not our bad times. We've got to keep those because we've got to savor the moment. <laughs> no, everything. Everything. And when we have that mindset, we begin to become weak before the Lord so His strength can build us up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. And in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, it says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. That's me. <laughs> That's me. I will give you rest. Take, your yoke, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Um, that part right there, learn from me. Um, what does Jesus say about the flowers? He says about the lilies, you know. They don't toil, yet they're dressed in a splendor that even Solomon didn't have. Um, that's my paraphrase. Or, he sees the, the sparrows, and when one falls, he notices it. Or, the very hairs on your head are numbered. Jesus trusted in that. He trusted his Father, and we need to begin to trust in Jesus so we can be trusted in the Father. Learn from Him. What did He do? He healed people. He raised the dead. He, he hugged and kissed the leper. And they were healed. He brought a new covenant to us. Glory. And we're not bound by religion. Glory. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. And you will find, oh, let's see, learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He owns our debt, whatever the, however that looks like. He owns the good things about us, and he owns the bad things. In the, in, in the good times, we can praise him. But we can praise Him in the times when we're growing. When things are getting stripped away from us. When we're being laid bare. We can still praise Him. We can still get close to Him. I've seen several incidences. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to count how many. But in the past couple of weeks. At least twice. So several. Two, two or more of several. Two or three times. That. All of a sudden, I'm sitting next to the Father. I could see myself. I could feel His presence tangibly. And I'm just rocking back and forth with Him. And He's saying, it's all right, son. You'll get through this. That's the love of our Father right there. And Jesus died so we could do this. He rose again to glory, seated at the right hand of the Father. Glory. And we need to see that, that we're seated in heavenlies. And what that means is we can look down on our problems. We don't have to look up to them. We look down on them. Those things that 
hold us back, Lord. And in Matthew 6, 11, it says, and 12, it says, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. What are we carrying around that we haven't forgiven for? What we haven't forgiven ourselves, what we haven't forgiven the Lord, what we haven't forgiven others. This morning I had to forgive my wife and my daughter. The Lord revealed something to me, and I had to walk in forgiveness. Was it anything that I was really carrying around that was a great burden? No. It was just kind of a seedling stuck out there, and sometimes those seedlings are worse than the trees themselves. Now let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you, but the, th the thing is, is we don't truly own anything, and, we, and as soon as we begin to realize this, we can throw ourselves on the lap of the Lord, because He'll take care of us in every single way. And I know some people, they're not going to believe this, but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What do you own that doesn't belong to the Lord? The things that torment you, do you own those? No, Jesus died for them. The things we think we own, the things that we think we have to wrestle through, belong to the Lord. And when we begin to realize this thing, we can begin to focus on Jesus. Because that becomes our grace and our strength. We think we own a car. Yeah, on paper... And in some computer, we own it. But the truth of the matter is, is if Jesus said, give it away, what would you do? If you have a high-paying job, and Jesus said, walk away and serve the poor, what would you do? We need, we need to be prepared to say that, yes, Jesus, you own everything that I have. Not just in word, but in deed. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Who owns our debt? Who owns every single atom in our body? Who owns everything that we possess? Who's given us everything that we have? Who's allowed things in our lives for growth, but the enemy may have perverted those things and turned them into something else. Got us to agree with a lie. These are things I'm just throwing out here this morning, but we have to realize that everything that we are belongs to Jesus. And that includes everything that's bad in us. And that includes everything around us. And everything coming to us. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. <laughs> You're awesome. Glory to God. You are awesome. And I thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for this time of fellowship with my brothers and sisters. And I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace on this word. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would bind it to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Very guilty. <laughs> yeah. He's a light pick for this. I've been working on my picking techniques. Get along with the Lord.
like to be worshipped to the Father? Do you worship the Father? They who worship the Son. Bye.